making an exchange. All right. All right. So let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this morning. We give you thanks for the opportunity to hear uh, your word uh, read from scripture and also your word shared uh, from the uh, inspiration that you offer. Uh, Lord, as we gather in this time, I personally ask that either because of me or in spite of me, that you bring a message to your people this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So, in our Finding Faith at the Movie series, our feature for today stretches a little bit beyond the screen to the stage as we take a look at parts of the Broadway hit Hamilton. And I'm, I'm excited to share this, but I'm also a little sad this morning because the inspiration for this was actually Emma Sheridan. She's a huge Hamilton fan, uh, and she's heading to Girl Scout camp. So I told her she'll have to watch it online and uh, let me know if I did an okay job or not. Uh, but Hamilton uh, is an American musical uh, sung and wrapped through musical, uh, 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 sung and wrapped through musical about the life of American founding father Alexander Hamilton, uh, with music lyrics and book by Lin Manuel Miranda, inspired by the 2004 biography Alexander Hamilton by historian Ron Chernow. Uh, many, how many of you have heard of this musical on Broadway? That's a huge hit right now. Has anybody seen it? Okay, good. So we're all in the same boat. Um, I had not seen it either, so I had to go and figure out how am I going to learn about this story even more uh, and discovered that someone took painstaking effort to do these like hand cartoons of Hamilton, uh, the musical, along with all the music pieces. It's like over two hours long on YouTube, but you can actually go through and at least get a feel uh, for it, and I'll let you experience a little bit a little bit of that too, uh, as one of the clips that will show will be from that. Uh, but it gave me a chance to, to get a feel uh, for, for what Hamilton is offering and why uh, it's become such a popular thing. While this play has, ironically enough, stirred up quite a bit of political bantering, uh, it has also helped to encourage curiosity in people to discover uh, the history of how the American experiment came to be. Uh, through the actions and aspirations of its forefathers, specifically for this play, Alexander Hamilton. Now, just a little bit on him. He's more than just a face on the $10 bill. Uh, and some of you are thinking, wow, he's on the $10 bill? Pull it out, take it. Yeah, so it's Alexander Hamilton on the $10 bill. Uh, but he also served under General George Washington during the Revolutionary War and participated at the Battle of Yorktown, uh, which was the battle that brought an end to that war. Um, one of the things near and dear to my heart is he helped to found the United States Coast Guard um, at, the, at the time, the group that would become the, the Coast Guard. He wrote most of the Federalist Papers as a way to defend the Constitution along with James Madison and John Jay. Uh, he helped to fix the Articles of Confederation as the country was coming together uh, and developing. He served as the first Secretary of the Treasury. He fought for a stronger central government as a part of the Federalist Party. And unfortunately, um, he is most famous for probably being killed by Aaron Burr in a duel. So that ended his life. And um, ironically, his son was also killed uh, in a duel as well. Uh, but he was one of our forefathers and a big part of um, the founding of the, the United States and how it came to be. But to understand uh, this story even more, you have to understand the time and the things that were going on during that time. The 17th and 18th century were a time in which great uh, curiosity was leading to a re-examination of faith, of science, of politics, and humanity's place in all of these things. The tensions between the American colonies and the aristocratic rule from England became fertile ground for many to consider what a new form of government might look like uh, that would allow for life 
liberty and the pursuit of happiness. happiness. Very good. So why are we talking about all this this week? I see all the red, white, and blue, right? We've got uh, Fourth of July coming up this week, uh, but we have to understand that um, where some of these influences came from, and we'll be talking about that even more. See, many things influence this pursuit, but I'd like to make an argument that I think the biggest influence actually came from faith. Uh, and how faith inspired those forefathers. And uh, again, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So what I'd like to do is, I said, we're using the musical Hamilton. Uh, There's a couple pieces of music that I really liked uh, from that that I think helped to tell the story a little bit better. So the first song we're going to take a look at uh, is sung by the King of England to the colonies, and it's called You'll Be Back. Uh, And what I want you to look for in this is the king's perspective on the relationship with the colonies. Uh, And then we're going to look at uh, a a shift in that as we go forward. But um, this was by a theater group that created this as sort of a lip sync sing-along to the song. So it is not an actual clip from the play, uh, but I hope that you'll enjoy it. So, Rob?
sent a couple options to Barry, and this was his favorite, so he's like, we got to show that one. And I was like, okay. Um, so that is the song from the perspective of the king, and I know it sort of makes light at the time, but it definitely represents uh, the concept that they were battling against, the concept of, of tyranny. Uh, scripture teaches freedom is about free will and a gift that God has given us, and we'll, we'll take a look at that even more deeply in a little bit, but tyranny was the exact opposite of that. You know, the king just expected the relationship to be there, that you're going to do what I ask you to do, and if you don't do it, I'll send an armed battalion. If you don't do it, I'll kill your friends and family to remind you of my love. Is that love? And for the forefathers, taking a look at that, they're looking at these things and saying, that isn't love, and that isn't our understanding. There's got to be something more. So they looked at liberty which the definition for that is the state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority on one's way of life, behavior, and political views. They were looking for something that would offer opportunity for free will. So our second clip gives a little bit more uh, look into the, the mindset and philosophy and thought Uh, behind another one of our forefathers who Alexander Hamilton served under. This is George Washington. Um, And at the time, uh, the people loved him so much that they actually wanted him to become president and stay that way. There were even folks that wanted him to take on almost a kingship uh, of rule. Um, and he saw that that would just lead to the same type of stuff that they had been fighting against. Uh, so in this song called One Last Time, uh, he is representing the transition that he's trying to create and sharing how faith actually inspires that uh, for him. So this is the cartoon drawing. No, it's not. I think it's the lyrics piece, right? Trying to remember which one I put in. All right, so anyway, I think it's the lyrics because I wanted you to be able to see the words, uh, but enjoy the song and then we'll talk about it. Thanks.
Good song. Uh, George Washington said, if I say goodbye, the nation learns to move on. It outlives me when I'm gone. Like the scripture says, everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. They'll be safe in the nation we've made. I want to sit under my own vine and fig tree, a moment alone in the shade, at home in the nation we've made, one last time. Um, he and many of the other forefathers were inspired by scripture. Where do we see another key figure who realized that if he stayed, the people would be so dependent upon him that they would never live into the freedom that was given to them by their creator? Jesus Christ did the same thing. Jesus came for a time. He taught. He gave the gift of grace, the gift of the Holy Spirit. He gave everything that was necessary for people to live into the fullness of everything that God had given them, the free will that was given to each and every person on the planet through God. But if Jesus stayed, he would have been elevated. Even Satan in the temptation in the desert tried to lead him into that kind of temptation to stay and take on kingship and everything else, but that's not what God intends. If we go back into the Old Testament, we see that struggle of the Hebrew people wanting a king. Even though God said, you don't need a king, you've got me, they still struggled. They wanted a king, but that's not what God desires for us because God wants us to have and enjoy freedom. Not only have and enjoy it, but learn from it and grow from it and share it with everybody else. If we take a look at our scriptures today, thank you again, Molly, for last minute sharing that, um, coming back from mission trip and going right into to reading this morning. I really appreciate that. Um, but we look at Deuteronomy and it's saying this commandment that I'm giving you right now is definitely not too difficult for you. It isn't unreachable. It isn't unreachable. It isn't up in heaven someplace. It's not on the other side of an ocean. It's something that's attainable, something that you can grab. It's easy. Free will and the freedom that God offers is something that's easy to grasp and take. It's not too lofty for us. It's not something where we need a king or an official or a government to be able to get it for us, it's something that we have with us. It says, look here, today I've set before you life and what's good versus death and what's wrong. If you obey the Lord, your God's commandments that I com I am, I'm commanding you right now, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments, his regulations, and his case laws, then you will live and thrive. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering. That's a whole lot different from a king saying, you have to stay with me. You have to do these things. This is God saying, here's the deal. I'm offering you a gift. It's easy to attain. It's something easy for you to grab. All you have to do is take it. And if you do these things, then you will be blessed and all will be well. Um, it's not a, if you don't do these things, I'm coming after you. It's still that free will offering. And then in Galatians, it gives us even stronger. It says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Do not use your freedom to indulge, indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by it. Um, and one thing I missed from the Deuteronomy piece it tells you where you can find that freedom. It's written in your heart and on your tongue. It's, it's something that, again, like I said, it's a freedom that is offered to us. And this is something that the forefathers realized in trying to come up with something that would work toward that. Many historians call the government that the United States has, has an experiment in democracy because it's something that was never done before. A government that would literally be looking toward life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Do we do it well? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes not. But it's an experiment. We keep trying. But they were inspired by faith to come up with this. We need to continue to look to faith to figure out as Christians how we can share that, not just in the United States, but beyond this as well. 
How can we take the freedom, the free will that we've been given and share it with others? Well, part of it is it's a responsibility that we've been given. Um, it's something that we need to appreciate. We need to be responsible for and We need to be intentional about trying to share it with others because every single person on the planet deserves the freedom that God has given deserves life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, and looking toward that. Um, so, with that in mind, as you take time this week to celebrate the freedom uh, that the U.S. fought so hard to attain and the great experiment of government that continues to be worked out, I ask that you please take time to examine even more the freedom that God created and instituted for all of humanity. As Christians, we need to do all in our power to assure that all of humanity is able to attain and enjoy the freedom that God has offered for all of creation. Amen.